Okay, let me take a few minutes to talk about everything you need to know about trigonometry. So the first thing is now it's always taught as the unit circle and the thing going the radius going around, which is true, right? And you need that to solve certain problems. But I always just think of trig functions as a wave, right? The idea of a wave, something that goes up and down, up and down, up and down forever, is just inherent an inherent part of our universe. So I just prefer to think of them as waves. Just you know, all so sine x is a wave. Right, and it happens to have a particular format. This is pi, 2 pi, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. And it looks like this. And right, it goes to 1 and minus 1. Now, even through graduate school, in engineering graduate school, whenever I had to like, do a test and solve the problem by hand, I always made my little graph somewhere on the scratch paper for sine and cosine in order to remember what the actual value was. So that's sine. Then cosine is just the opposite, right? The points are all the same. It just goes like this. So I always drew these two graphs out before I ever tried to manually come up with a value of sine or cosine for any angle. So that's the first thing you need to know is that they're waves, right? Then the second thing is that what are these, what's, what are the units of this axis? It's radians. So how do we convert radians to degrees? Well, if you think about a circle, what's the circumference of a circle? 2 pi times the radius. A radian is the amount of arc length that's, that's uh, uh, described by an angle of, of size 1 radian, right? So there's 2 pi divided by 1. So I always remember pi over 180, right, is radians to degrees. And so then there's a few common things you have to know, right? So 180 degrees is pi, 90 degrees is pi over 2, 45 degrees is pi over 4, 60 degrees is 2 thirds pi. I'm sorry, that's not right. pi over 3, and 30 degrees is pi over 6. Right, and now we're, while we're at it, let's just make a little table here and we'll just put them in. Sine and cosine. Right, and if you know a few numbers, like for example, sine is 1 at 90, cosine 0, Cosine is, and let's put zero in here. Cosine is one at zero and sine is zero at zero. So we already have almost half the thing done. 45 degrees are both, they're both square root of two over two, point seven oh seven. Right, and then we have 60 degrees. One of them is gonna be one half and the other one is gonna be square root of three over two. Sine at 60 is gonna be square root of three over two. Uh, which is like 0.866, and the other one's one half, and then they're just reversed. Sine of 30 is one half, right? And you can see that when you make your little cartoon, you can see that sine starts out and grows slowly, whereas cosine comes down. So that's why I always make the cartoon. I have the numbers in my head. It's just a matter of mapping them to the right square. And here we have square root of 3 over 2, 0.866. Right, if you know that, that's all you really need to know about trigonometric values. You can, anything else, it's going to be a repetition of that in one way or another. You might have to add pi to it. You might have to add 3 pi over 2 to it, but it's the same thing. Oops, then you have a common denominator problem. Now, let me erase it, and we'll go through the rest of trig here. Uh, I'm going to leave my sine and cosine because I'm going to draw on them. Any other function you need to know is just based on one of these. So I only ever learn these, and then I can always figure it out on the fly if I have to. 
So cosecant is one over sine of x, right? So here, now let's just draw it in. So here's sine at zero. What's one over zero is infinity. So it comes from infinity at, at one. What's one over one is one. So cosecant goes like this, right? Wherever it's zero, it's infinity. Wherever it's one or minus one, it's the same thing. So that's cosecant x. Now, secant of x is 1 over cosine. So it's just the same thing, except it's shifted, right? Just like the sine and cosine are the same thing, just shifted. Right, that's secant of x. And then we're just left with tangent and cotangent. Well, tangent is sine over cosine. So let's just draw it out here. Let's make another graph for tangent. Well, let's make it in the middle of the, put the axis in the middle of the page. Right, this, we always use the same points, and we'll put in our 1 and minus 1. So sine is, ta tangent is sine over cosine. Well, at 0, sine is 0, cosine is 1, 0 over 1 is 0. At, uh, I'll use black for this just to keep everything consistent with the colors. At pi over 2, sine is 1, cosine is 0. 1 over 0 is infinity up here. So the thing goes like this. And then cotangent, I'll do it in red, is just cosine of x over sine of x. So it's going to be the opposite, right? So here is 0 is infinity, but yet here it's so at 0, we have cosine is 1, sine is 0. So we're at, somewhere at infinity. At pi over 2, cosine is 0, sine is 1. So we're at 0. I think I have, no, I think that's right. So that's just the same pattern reversed. Okay, so that's how you graph these. And this is good enough as a graph to, in order to solve a calculus problem. You know, those days of having all those x, y, all those, the little grid and putting in all the numbers is, you don't need that. And then also you have the graphing calculator, which, is, which has, you know, changed the whole nature of calculus. Uh, so let me erase this. So we've talked about how to calculate the simple things, the fact that they're waves, how to graph them. Now let's talk about the identities. Right, this one you have to memorize. And then the other two you have to memorize. Sine 2x is 2, sine x, cosine x. And cosine 2x is cosine squared x, minus sine squared x. These three you have to memorize. Now, if you know sine and cosine, then you know tangent, cosecant, all the others, because you can always just rewrite, right? Whenever I get stuck with any trig prime, I just rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine and then go from there. So now the next thing you need to know is that you can derive some other useful identities from these, right? So for example, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1, right? Well here, cosine squared x, if we take this equation, is the same as cosine 2x plus sine squared x, right? So we can plug that in here. So we have sine squared x plus cosine 2x plus sine squared x equals 1. Now let's pull our terms together. So we have cosine 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now 
Now this one you don't have to remember. You can always derive it on the fly if you need to, but remember that it exists, that there's a way to go from sine squared to cosine, right? And so then what's the, inver what's the other, the opposite of this is that sine, sine of x is the square root of cosine 2x, now let's see, 1 minus cosine 2x over 2, right, because I have to move it over there. So this is the other version. You don't have to remember these in your head, but you have to remember that they exist and how you can derive them in the minute or less on any test if you need to. Okay, so this is the correct formulation of this one other trig identity. Now remember, these are the three to memorize in your head. And then these other two, which are extremely useful in, in doing integrals, extremely useful, you can always derive on the fly, right? So all you do is you plug in, you take this cosine 2x identity and you either replace the cosine squared from this equation or the sine squared. And then you go through and you collect terms and you get sine x is square root of 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 and cosine x is square root of 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. Extremely useful. And this is like the get out of jail free card for a lot of trigonometric integrals. We talked about how to calculate them, the graphs, the wave, the uh, identities. Is there anything about trig functions? Oh yeah, so now let's talk about the triangles, right? So we have, right, and we always have Pythagoreans. Do I even need to mention Pythagorean's theorem? I hope not. We have a 30 degree, 60, 90 triangle. This is one half, this is two, this is square root of three over two, right? You have to remember that one and be able to apply it because you always have these ladder problems and tightrope walker shadow problems and what have you that rely on this kind of stuff. Then you have another triangle, 45, 45, 90, and this is one, one square root of two, right? And you can multiply these by some factor, right? So this is the same as two A, a over 2 and square root of 3 over 2a, or square root of 2a, a, a. These two you have to remember in your head. Uh, while I'm on the topic, this is not exactly trig, but it's related. The Pythagorean integer, right, perfect integer. So we all know about the 3, 4, 5, right? But there's also the 5, 12, 13. And then there's one that's even higher than this, which I forgot, which you'll rarely encounter. But these two you absolutely have to know. A lot of people only know 3, 4, 5. They forget the 5, 12, 13. Trig functions and trig identities. Let me say a few words about trig identities. I always convert to sine and cosine. And then try to simplify. Right, I, I, I always convert it first and then it usually the, the whole thing just falls apart when you get it into sines and cosines anyway.